In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do product design using the Pick Your Pepper campaign. First, I created a, moon, a mood board um, inspired by the artwork of John Bergerman. I really like the bright colors. Um, then I need to drop my template. Um, in pre-COVID times, I would have given you guys the template to make this a little bit easier, but um, since I can't pass you guys any worksheets, you're going to have to draw out your template. So that's going to require you to take out your rulers and measure out the sizes you need and draw them in your sketchbook. Remember that for this lesson you're going to be creating two mood board designs so please make sure that you measure them carefully. Um, you're looking at it about 2.5 inches by 9.25 inches um, and once you've measured it out and made sure all that your lines are straight um, you'll be able to get started. With any product that goes to shelves, you always have an area for details from the manufacturer. In the case of food products, you have the nutrition information. So it's really important that when you do your design, you're aware that you don't have the entire label available to you. There is a section for the nutrition information, so it's important you block that off. If you're following the measurements in this template, that is 3.95 centimeters. The last thing that is important to include in your template is some guidelines for your text. Because you're trying to do a product design of a brand that already exists, you need to keep in mind the general size and placement of the text. So right now what I'm doing is I'm drawing a series of guidelines so that I can understand exactly where I need to uh, place all the letters. Um, in the slides that accompany this lesson, you will see an example of the Dr. Pepper logo with guidelines to help you understand how to draw the guidelines yourself. On my mood board, I took a look at some of the colors that I might want to use within my design, and I aimed for roughly the pinks and greens. However, as I started working, I decided that I wanted to blend in a bit of purples, so I ended up with something that is roughly a split complementary color scheme, um, meaning that I used sort of purples and pinks um, plus some greens, and that kind of got me the color scheme that I wanted to use. So you can see that here in the color wheel, but I've also put out a color swatch along the side of my page so I can keep track of which markers create which color and what looks good next to each other. The next step is starting to draw in your text to have a good idea of where they are because it's really important that you don't lose your text as you create your design because for a product text and the name of the product is incredibly important because that's how you get brand recognition especially when you're doing a modified design and you're changing what the consumer expects to see. Here I begin to draw on my design with pencil to get a rough idea of the main elements. I want to make sure that I'm drawing lightly if you press too hard on the page, you won't be able to erase your pencil marks and it will cause a problem with your final design. So please, I would like to emphasize, students, you need to draw lightly during this step. Now I'm going to be using my brush pens to add color. I like the brush pens because um, they move a little bit similar to paint with the brush tips um, since we can't access paint right now in the classrooms due to COVID. Um, However, you can see that as I'm blocking the colors, I'm bouncing around trying to start with the larger shapes before I move to the smaller ones. So I get an idea of where my main color components are. To clean up my design, I decided to use a fine tip pen to make the artwork have a more graphic and strong quality because the brush pens left 
the edge is a little bit muddled. So here I'm using a fine tip pen to draw in some detail of both the uh, contour lines but also some textures and effects within the drawing. Um, doing this helps me create a bit of value and depth within the image but it also helps define each of the shapes as unique from one another which is part of the style that I was trying to achieve for my mood board. You can see this has also allowed me to identify areas that I want to go in and add more details to um, to make my design stronger and filled with more color. Once I've done that I go around my text and now I can start filling in the white space because I don't want any white space in my particular product design so I'm using a brush tip, a uh, black fine tip pen to go through and do that. Now I've asked in the project that you do two different versions. So I looked at my first version and decided it was too dark and I wanted to make something brighter. So in this design, I've used the text that's more in the style of Bergerman, who was in my mood board. And there was an example of that text within my mood board. And I'm starting with the two brightest colors, which are a very bright pink and a very bright green. It's, it's really nice to start with those two complementary colors, um, being opposite sides of the color wheel, plus also very neon because it really allows me to see the bright aspects of my design. You can see here the difference in the colors. Now I'm starting to block in some of the darker colors to kind of create variation within my design. And I'm going to carry that forward through the rest of the piece. After that, I'll move on to fine tip pens and filling in the background just like I did with the first version. A great way to take any of your graphic design work further for any of our lessons or if you continue to experiment with this idea is to scan your image and put it into something like Photoshop, uh, Pixlr, Photopea and do some editing to clean up any irregularities in the color or the line work to create a strong final image.